Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi and I wish you all a happy new year and a great 2020. So today we talk about the use of GnRH analog trigger as a luteal phase support. Well, that's surprising, isn't it? And we have done something similar to this in the past and have spoken about it, but this is quite a recent paper that focuses slightly more on what happens to the hormonal profile. So, and this was a paper published in RBM online. And so what did they do? They had, they wanted to see the feasibility of subcutaneous genetic analog as a trigger in an antagonist cycle and see whether the luteal phase is adequately supported. And they wanted to do this in fresh cycles. So they divided it into two groups. One group would, uh, would get microdose HCG as a trigger, which was 80 uh, units of Ovitral, while the, or the other group would go ahead and get analog trigger as well as analog given every third day, every other day in fact, uh, one milligram starting from day three after a collection. So when we had a look at this concepts, and in addition, both of these groups had micronized progesterone of endometrium 100 milligram three times a day, and a fresh blastocyst transfer was done. So it was a prospective randomized controlled trials of women who were less than 40 years of age on an antagonist cycle, day five embryos, estrogen, which was greater than 2,500 picogram per ml, if in case the estrogen went up to more than 4,500, it was converted to a freeze-all protocol and the analog trigger was given 0.2 milligram of tryptarolin and 36 hours after a collection, a collection was done. Now, E2, progesterone and LH were also done and from day 3, day 5 and day 9 after a collection. So if you have a look at the results, and the results looked at the number of eggs obtained were good and there's no doubt now that if you use the unlock trigger, your egg numbers seem to be good and I will keep telling you, make your IVF cycle safer. Use the unlock trigger extensively because that will give you a much better ch chance of avoiding ovarian hyperstimulation. If you look at the fertilization rates, they were good, but look at the clinical pregnancy rate of 43.6%, and that's on fresh embryos without HCG. Now, have a look at it in the past, and what was the, was the concept of what Professor Peter Hermaden said, and he said that, that you need to give 1,500 of HCG at oocyte retrieval, because what does that do is, you need some amount of HCG to prolong the life of the corpus luteum, and give back the high pregnancy rates. Without HCG, it doesn't seem to work. So here when you see that without HCG, using GNRH analog agonist as a luteal phase support seems to give the similar success. Now, why would that happen? And that would happen because the GNRH agonist tends to keep releasing LH and it stimulates the pituitary to continue giving LH and LH, sustained LH activity, in fact, allows the, the corpus luteum to produce estrogen and progesterone. There's another theory, there's another theory that says that the LH release has a positive impact on the endometrium by stimulating angiogenetic factors. And that may also be true because, again, it, the implantation window is LH dependent which means that it is also progesterone dependent and without the rise of LH you do not see the rise of progesterone. So if you have a look at the LH levels, the lowest LH was in day of the trigger. That's expected because you've got given the antagonist as a, there is an inhibition to the positive feedback that is occurring. But then if you start looking at the LH from the graph the LH starts increasing and it increases right up to for another week or so. Along with it, if you see, there is a sustained rise of progesterone and that progesterone decline doesn't take place for a few days later, but that tends to happen. And so what does this tell us? And this tells us very well 
that if you give GnRH analog in the luteal phase, you will allow LH activity to continue. And this is again something which you need, we have to think about is that while the world is going aggressively towards a freeze-all protocol, sometimes a freeze-all protocol may not be conducive. And especially in cases where you've got have your poor blastocyst, and what do you do? And these cases where you can hopefully try and avoid severe human hyperstimulation may need to be planned. But again, the best way to lower the incidence of ovarian hyperstimulation is to give an egg on this trigger and to freeze embryos. So again, that is a short paper, something which is, addresses a new concept. It addresses a way that we can start thinking along lines of how we can use this protocol in conjunction with the other protocols to improve our chances. And I hope you enjoyed this talk. Uh, hopefully in the new year, I'll try and, I'll, I'll try and put up close to about 100 more videos this year. They are about close to 300 to 400 odd videos of teaching that are already online. And I hope that we enjoy uh, what we can gain from these videos. Thank you very much.